There are so many mods in Seven Days to Die, it might seem a little overwhelming to some people, especially when you're new to the game. Well, don't panic, I'm here to explain all the mods, what they do, and what to use them on. Before I get started, I will say I'll leave timestamps below, so if you guys want to refer to this video in the future, you can just skip to the section, and then it'll just save you time rather than watching the whole entire video. So there are five mod types in the game that can be used to either increase damage, defense, efficiency, or just to add utility to your item. And these can be categorized in armor, tools, weapons, vehicles, and the drone. Let's start by looking at armor and clothing. So with the armor and clothing mods, uh, I basically categorize them into must have, preferential, and then everything else. So the must have mods, in my opinion, for when you get armor mods are the pocket mods, the clothing pocket mods, the plating mods, and then the bandolier, the helmet light, and also the impact bracing mod. These are pretty much the standard uh, mods that you put onto any kind of armor that you have. Let's start with the pocket mods. So the pocket mods come in three forms, the single, double, and triple. Each one will increase carrying capacity by one, two, and three respectively and you can put these on all your armor pieces so for example the helmet your leg your chest your boots and your gloves and if you put a triple pocket mod on every single armor it will give you a total of 15 slots in your inventory the other three remaining slots can be used by the clothing pocket mod which is one slot and then the double clothing pocket mod and you can put these on any of your normal clothing so just your shirt here and your pants so if i just mod these and as you can see we have a full inventory space so all those people that say pack mule is a wasted perk this is the reason why so if you manage to find the schematic to get triple pocket mods and double clothing pocket mods this is why and they'll fit into every single piece and increase your carrying capacity next is the armor plating mod so there are two versions there is the standard armor plating mod which increases your armor by one and then the other one the banded plated armor mod which increases your rating by two and you can stack these for one for every armor piece giving you a total of 10 extra armor reducing the amount of damage you're going to be taking you can check the amount of armor you are getting from the extended character stats in your character screen so you can see here the armor rating is 54.95 if we mod all the armor with the banded armor plating mod you can see that after adding all the banded armor it's now up to 64.95 instead of 54.95 the bandolier mod increases your reload speed by 15 percent and it goes on your chest or leg armor but you can't stack them so 15% is the maximum that you're going to go for so it's up to you whether you want to put them onto your military vest or onto your military leg armor the helmet light mod is pretty much a no-brainer you're gonna need it all the time and in most instances you're probably just gonna leave it on even during through daylight there is literally no reason not to get a helmet light mod in the game which you can put on to your helmet obviously the last of the must-have mods is the impact bracing mods which reduces fall damage and this simply just goes onto your boots. So the next two, the muffler mods and the custom fitting mods are preferential. It really depends on your playstyle and what armor you're wearing as well. If you like to be stealthy stealthy then I would highly recommend adding both of these to your armor uh, and they go on every single one of your armor pieces so the advanced muffler will reduce noise by 8 and then the muffled connector mod reduces by 4 that's per piece and then the improved fitting mod will increase your mobility so movement speed by 2 and the stamina by 0.02 and then the custom fitting mods will again increase your mobility by 3% and reduce stamina by 0.05%. Using a full set of armor as a comparison, running without custom fitting mods will deplete your stamina much more rapidly and you'll run a lot slower. Compared to having custom fitting mods on each piece of armor which will reduce your stamina a lot slower whilst at the same time you'll be able to run a lot faster. This is before any perks or books. To put this into numbers, if you have no custom fitting mods, you can only sprint for about 22 seconds, while custom fitting mods will allow you to run for 32 seconds. 
That's an extra 10 seconds of running time, which could be the difference between life or death. The water purifier mod is basically a mod that allows you to drink murky water. That's right, you can drink murky water straight from the drawer. So you don't need to cook the water in the campfire anymore. Although saying that boiled water is quite easy to make now since you no longer need a cooking pot and you can craft it straight within the campfire. However, the benefit of having the water purifier mod is that boiled water stacks up to 10 and gives you 20 water per drink. Whereas murky water, you get 10 water but stacks up to 125 so you can carry a lot more water on you when you're traveling around the world the last four items are the very bottom of my preferences in my opinion these perform the lowest role out of the mods that i've already showcased if you do find yourself living in like the desert or the snow biome the first two will give you high cold resist and heat resist so the scope cap mod will give you roughly about 11 cold resist and then the cowboy hat mod will give you roughly about 13 cold resist the other two the baseball cap mod and the press boy cap mod are general items they don't really do well or they're not bad at all in regards to giving you protection they're just there mainly for cosmetics so if you do have them if you have a spare slot then by all means whack it on but i would swap it out as soon as something better comes along tools so the tools that you're going to be using in the game are the stone axe which is right at the beginning the claw hammer the steel axe the steel pickaxe the steel shovel and late game the auger and for the mods you have the bunker buster mod which increases damage to stone by 15 percent the wood splitter mod which does 15 percent more damage to wood the grave digger mod 15 percent damage to dirt and 15% more damage to iron with the iron breaker mod. There is also the fireman's axe mod which deals 25 more damage to blocks but does less damage to enemies. So you can just stick this on a normal axe or anything like that and you'll just do more damage meaning you'll break the block a lot quicker. The auger has some extra mods to go with it. So we have the small tank mod and then the large tank mod and as I say increases the tank side by 50% and the other one by 100%. This means that you're going to basically refuel your auger less often. So you can put all these mods onto every single one of your tools. So we have the stone axe here, the claw hammer, the pickaxe, the shovel, the steel axe, and again the auger which can have all the mods showing here with the green line apart from the fireman's axe mod. You may have already noticed that when I highlighted, say, the pickaxe mod, you'll see that all the mods are available. This means you can put them on, so you don't necessarily have to have a gravedigger mod on a shovel, as an example, or the wood splitter mod on an axe. Putting all these mods onto a tool will increase its damage. So if I put the bunker buster mod on, you'll see that it's increased by 2.3%, or 2.3. If I put the wood splitter mod, Increase to 4.6, the grave digger 6.9, and then 9.2. So you could increase your block damage by simply adding all the mods, even though it looks like it shouldn't fit on the item. So you can add all these mods onto the tool to increase the block damage, which means you harvest faster and you dig a lot quicker. Before we move into the weapons, I want to just add that some of these mods are also universal as well so we've already said that the iron breaker mod and the wood splitter mod can go on any tool but they can also go on pretty much any melee weapon as well the burning shaft mod can go on any tool and the grips the first firing grip the ergonomic grip and then the structural brace mod can all go onto a tool as well so if you don't have for example say you have three mods here like this the iron breaker mod the wood splitter and the um, bunker buster but you don't have the grave digger mod you can just supplement it and put that onto your tool to increase the block damage additionally as well the weighted head mod and the rad remover mod can pretty much go on any melee item at all so tools and weapons so the other three are the tempered blade mod the serrated blade mod and also the diamond blade tip mod and all three of these go onto a bladed item this also includes the shovel the shovel is actually classed as a bladed item as well and you can actually add these to um, the mod slots with two of these so anything with the bladed tip mod 
and then the temple blade mod here and then also you can add the serrated blade mod as well along with the diamond tip if you try to add the temper blade and the serrated it won't work it won't allow you so you can only have another bladed mod with the diamond blade tip mod so again this is handy for just adding onto a shovel to increase its block damage so therefore you can basically two shot shovel Looking at weapons and starting with range, range mods are kind of categorized into certain areas of expertise. So for example, here at the top, we have utility. So for example, the flashlight mod, the silencer mod, the rad remover mod, and the crippler mod. So the weapon flashlight adds a flashlight to the end of your weapon. The silencer mod reduces the sound it makes from that gun. And the rad remover reduces the regeneration of the green radiator zombies and the crippler mod basically slows down a zombie from running at you next we have the control group or the trigger group mods which is the semi mod the burst mod and the full auto mod the semi auto mod allows your gun if it's a fully automatic to basically shoot one bullet at a time by one click so if i hold down my mouse it won't do it it'll just shoot one at a time so therefore it'll allow me to save bullets when i fire the burst mod allows me to shoot three rounds before having to press the mouse again. So if I hold down my mouse button, three shots, and then let go and have to press down again, that's three shots. So it's nice to conserve your ammunition in this way. And finally, the full auto mod allows you to shoot constantly until your magazine runs out. The next set of mods kind of dictate the accuracy of your weapon. So we have the retracting stock mod, the foregrip mod, the laser sight mod, and also the barrel extender mod. These three or these four will increase the accuracy when you're hip firing, so not aiming down the sight. And then the other ones here, so we have the reflex sight mod, the scope, the times four scope, the eight scope, and then the bipod mod all increases accuracy when aiming. So for anybody that's wanting to use like a crossbow or even like a sniper rifle or anything like that this will all increase your accuracy making you less likely to miss the target the next lot are shotgun specific so we have the muzzle brake mod the sawn off shotgun mod the shotgun duckbill mod and the shotgun choke mod the muzzle brake will reduce recoil when you're firing the sawn off shotgun will increase the spread of your projectile so uh, all the pellets coming out of a shotgun the duck bill mod will make it into like a flat frisbee shape aiming in like a blade formation and then the choke mod basically narrows everything down so it centers all your pellets into one location the shotgun tube extender mod will increase the magazine capacity for a shotgun and then we have the magazine extender mod for all the automatics and the handguns and then we have the drum magazine mod which also increases the magazine size for shotguns and the m60 but we're going to take all these mods and find out which one goes on what the next ones are mag extender mods so we have the shotgun specific shotgun tube extender mod increases shotgun shells for the pump shoddy by three shells the magazine extender mod and the drum mag mod the last two are bow specific so the arrow rest mod improves the accuracy of bows and then the polymer string mod basically makes your bolts and arrows fly a lot faster so we're going to take all these mods put them in our inventory and then we're going to see which mods go on which weapon starting with the pipe machine gun it looks like it accepts every single mod barring the times eight mod and the shotgun tube extender mod and then the additional shotgun mods as well as the bow mods the same goes for the ak and the tactical assault rifle and also the m60 with the addition that the retracting stock mod does not fit on the m60 looking at the bows it looks like it's basically four mods you can apply onto the bows the polymer string mod the arrow rest mod the crippler mod and also the rad remover mod the same applies for the wooden bow and also the compound bow the crossbows allow for a, a wider variety of mods compared to the bows so as you can see here we can have the polymer string mod but not the arrow rest mod and you can have flashlight mods the foregrip mod the laser sight mod the reflex sight mods times two times four and the bipod mod everything else is excluded from the moddable categories this also includes the compound crossbow 
Moving on to handguns and general small arms, we have the pipe pistols to start off with. It looks like you can have all the utility items on here, so the flashlight mod, the silencer and the crippler mod, the barrel extender mod and also the laser sight mod in regards to the hip firing. Aiming accuracy, you can have the reflex sight mod and the times 2 scope and then also the muzzle brake mod to reduce the recoil. A few more exceptions to the pistol, so you can have any of the trigger group mods for the pistol. Additionally, you can have the magazine extender mod and everything that applied to the pipe pistol can also apply to the normal pistol. The magnum is very similar to the pipe pistol in regards that you can have all the utility mods applied on top and the barrel extender mod and also the laser sight mod. Again, with the reflex sight mod, the times 2 scope and also the muzzle brake mod. Everything is excluded from the magnum. And the Desert Vulture is similar to the pistol as it's a one-up upgrade. You can have all the trigger group mods in there as well, as well as the magazine extender mod added on top and everything prior to the 44 Magnum. The SMG is very similar to the Desert Vulture and the pistol in regards to the trigger group mods and also the additional mods that you have before. The additional is that you can have a foregrip mod to increase accuracy when firing from the hip. For rifles, we're looking at the pipe rifle, the hunting rifle, and the lever action rifle, and the sniper rifle. So the pipe rifle, you can basically have all the utility mods in here, as well as all the hip firing mods available, and all the aimed accuracy mods available. And additionally, you can also have the muzzle brake mod. You can't have any trigger group mods or any magazine extenders on the pipe rifle. The same goes for the hunting rifle the lever action rifle and the sniper rifle which allows you to basically put all the previous mods on including the magazine extender mod and also the trigger group mod so you can have the semi-auto the burst mod and also the full auto mode which allows you to fire your sniper rifle constantly although I wouldn't advise it Moving on to the shotgun category, we have the pipe shotgun, again allows you to use the utility and the hip firing mods. You have one aimed mod, which is the reflex sight mod, and then you have any of the shotgun specific mods on top. The same applies for the double barrel shotgun, with the exception that you cannot have the sawn off shotgun mod. The pump shotgun is exactly the same as the pipe shotgun except you have the addition of the shotgun tube extender mod allowing you for three extra shells and finally you have the auto shotgun again you have everything from the top row here the reflex sight mods all the trigger group mods all the shotgun specific ones and then the two mag extenders as well so the drum mod and the magazine extender mod allowing you for a bigger magazine size and finally, the robotic turret. And yes, the robotic turret is a ranged weapon. You can use it handheld or place it on the ground. And it looks like you can't have a silencer or any weapons like flash mod on there. You can have a rad remover or crippleum, as well as two hip accuracy mods, two trigger mods, which is the burst mod and the full auto mod, the muzzle brake, the duck build mod, and also the shotgun choke mod as well as two magazine extender mods. So one magazine extender and then the drum magazine mod as well. With the melee mods, there are a few universal and also weapon specific mods that you can use. So we have the structural brace mod, which lowers degradation of tools and weapons by 25%. The ergonomic grip mod, which reduces stamina when using. The fortifying grip mod increases your hit point regeneration when below 50%. Doubles as a light source and also sets your enemies on fire, as it says in the description. A hunter mod does more damage to animals. And then also the rad remover as well, same as the range mods. Regards to like clubs and blunts in general, we have the barbed wire mod, which increases the chance of bleeding. The metal chain mod, which increases the chance of a knockdown. The metal spike mod, which lowers the armor's rating by 20% for each hit. Finally, we have the weighted head mod, which adds a chance to stun or slow a zombie. Blades wise, you have three options here. You have the diamond blade tip mod, which increases durability. The temper blade mod increases block damage and reduces degradation by 15%. And then we have the serrated blade mod, which adds 10% chance to cause bleeding on regular attacks. Additionally, there is the stun baton repulsor mod, 
Basically, on the stun button, if you install this, you have a chance to send a zombie flying. And not to forget as well, the mods that we use for the tools as well can also go onto many of the melee weapons as well to increase your damage. So I'm going to take all these and see which mods go on which weapons. Starting with the spears, so specifically the stone spear, you, again you can have all the universal mods here, so all the tool mods. You can have all the bladed mods as well, except remember that you can only have the diamond blade and one of the other two. And in addition you can have the weighted head mod. The same applies for the iron spear. And the same goes for the steel spear. With the clubs, they seem to be the most versatile. They pretty much can have any single mod on there apart from any of the bladed mods and also the stun baton repulsor mods. The same with the baseball bat and the same with the steel club. The stone sledgehammer are similar to the clubs except you can't have the club specific mods here. So it looks like you can't have the barbed wire mod the metal spike mod or the metal chain mod. You can have any of the universal ones as well as the tools and then one additional weighted head mod on top of that as well for a chance to stun. Same applies for the iron sledgehammer and the same applies for the steel sledgehammer. With the knuckles it looks like you can apply mostly all of the universal mod apart from the burning shaft mod. The burning shaft mod cannot go on the knuckles. I guess that kind of makes sense. You'll be setting your hands on fire. Uh, the weighted head mod and as well as all the tool mods on top. The same goes for the iron knuckles and the same goes for the steel knuckles. I guess that makes the burning shaft mod not a universal mod. For the knives we have the bow knife, the hunting knife and the machete. The bow knife can have anything from the top row apart from the burning shaft mod. Any of the bladed edges mod, obviously two out of three of these, and then the iron breaker mod as well, and then the tool mods as well. The same with the hunting knife. And the machete can have the burning shaft mod added on top of the other mods that the other knives had. Looking at the two batons, now the pipe baton is not specifically for the intellect build, at least doesn't say that in any kind of description whatsoever, but Having them say baton in their in their title or in their name, I would assume they will fall under the same category. So looking at the pipe baton, we can see that you can have all the mods on the top here apart from the burning shaft mod. You can also have the weighted head mod and also all the tools mod. The stun up baton repulsor mod does not fit on the pipe baton. And if we look at the stun baton, is exactly the same you can't have a burning shaft mod but you can have finally the stun baton repulsor mod last but not least we're going to be looking at the robotic sledge which can be used as a melee weapon as well so if we modify this we can see that they're pretty much the same as the previous melee weapons so we can have all of everything in the top row including the burning shaft mod you can have also the weighted head mod and again you can have all the tool mods on top so with all the armor, tools and weapon mods all looked at, let's move on to the vehicle mods and see what they do. So we have 5 mods available for vehicles. We have the fuel saver mod, basically reduces the amount of fuel that you're going to use for your vehicles. The reserve fuel tank mod increases your fuel storage by 50%. The supercharger mod basically increases the speed of your vehicle. The expanded seating mod, this increases the seating of whatever transport that you have. And then we have the vehicle off-road headlight mod as well. Again, I'm going to take all these mods and see if we can apply them to all the vehicles and see which mods can go where. The bicycle, being the most basic form of transport, can't have any of the vehicle mods on top at all. So you can't even have another person riding on the bike. So the bike is just what it is. It's just a bike and you can only use it for yourself and with no extra mod cons at all. Looking at the mini bike, it looks like you can have all the mods, but the mini bike looks like can have every single mod available. And just to note that you can only have one mod of every type into the mod slot. So if I add the fuel saver mod here, and if I try to add another one, it will allow me to do it. So you can choose any three of the five mods to add onto your mini bike. The motorcycle also allows you to have every single mod type so you can just basically put one of every one onto here obviously there is only four slots so choose wisely in regards to what you want to put on i do recommend that you put these four on instead of the headlight honestly nobody uses the headlight 
Having the expanded seating mod will allow you to have one extra passenger on the motorbike as well. So you can have somebody sat behind you on the motorbike while the other person is driving along. The 4x4 has five slots, meaning that you can have every single mod available for the vehicle category into your 4x4. And finally, the gyrocopter has four slots, but you can only have three mods available on the gyrocopter, which means one slot will always be empty. With Alpha 20, they've added a new robotic drone which follows you around everywhere you go. It doesn't do any damage to zombies or anything like that. It's just basically a utility drone to aid you in your adventures. So if you find one, just pick it up. I'll be here if you need me. And then click on it to modify and you can have these mods to go with it. So you have the armor plating mod which reduces the damage it takes by 50%. The Morale Boosting mod, which increases your stamina by 10%. The Headlamp mod, which adds a torch to the drone. The Robotic Drone Medic mod, which if you ha give it anything like a first aid kit or a medical bandage, will use that to heal you when you are below 50%. And then we also have the drone cargo mod, which you can actually fill multiple of. So you can have four here since it has four slots on the tier six drone. And each cargo mod increases the storage capacity by eight. So if I just pop this on here, actually, let me show you what it is, what looks like first. So you can see it has two rows of storage. And if I put the four cargo mods on. Oh, sure. Pack me in a box like your other old thing. You can see we have four extra rows, one, two, three, four, one for every mod slot. So which mods should you take for the drone? Well, at the beginning, I think if you find one, I think the best ones are probably the medic mod and also the stamina mod. I think one of these two to give you extra kind of survivability would be great. But eventually, as you start perking up and you're going to start getting like 30% stamina for every time that you kill something with sexual tyrannosaurus just remove this and just have an extra cargo mod that way you have a total of 24 extra slots to basically follow you around which is invaluable really and there you have it that is all the mods going from armor all the way to the drone covering your weapons and your tools and also your vehicles as well. I hope that wasn't too much information. Like I said, I'll leave a timestamp below so you can just skip to the relevant section if you want to come back to this video and refer to it in the future. But if you found this video helpful, please make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button as well, and I shall catch you in the next one. Peace.